Today we are actually getting all our transplants in. It's probably the most rewarding day for me after starting some of these seeds from January. So it's been almost six months. Wait, it has been six months for some of them. Um, but when you're transplanting, um, I'm hoping that you all read the or know to harden off your plants. If you haven't, then you should probably look at hardening off your plants first. They've all been hardened off for the last five weeks. Now um, we have our bump up stuff that goes underneath each plant. Um, we have a variety of different, uh, I had some help doing this with my garden helper. Um, and each transplant should have its own type of soil underneath it. So for instance, this one here says corn. This is the soil that's going under the corn. Corn, um, you use, you're gonna use like a 64-0-0 um, nitrogen mix because that's what it needs. Put uh, chicken manure in here along with bone meal, blood meal, Epsom salt. Um, and if you've been following any of my blogs or videos, you know that I'm really big on bone meal, blood meal, and Epsom salt in everything. And yeah, so that'll go underneath the corn. Whereas this one must be, there's eggshells. The gourds. So gourds, this is like your squash, your zucchinis, your cucumbers. They really, especially your big squash, like your red octobers, sorry about the highway there, uh, your red octobers, your spaghetti squash, your butternut squash, all of those, they love nitrogen. So this is high, super high in nitrogen. It has raw chicken manure mixed in here, along with soil. Oh, they all have soil and peat moss as well. So soil and peat moss base. It also has eggshells in here. The eggshells are, um, give a slow release of calcium as, as the plant is growing down. And of course, bone meal, blood meal, and Epsom salts. Um, my tomatoes. Tomatoes are a whole other story. Tomatoes, I will not put chicken manure in there because it's way too high in nitrogen. And if you do, you'll notice that your tomatoes, they'll, they'll look fantastic. They'll look big and green and leafy because anything that's green and leafy loves nitrogen. Um, but your fruit will be awful. Your fruit might not even form or they'll form really badly. So you will want to put composted cow manure in there. And uh, again, with the bone meal, the blood meal, the Epsom salts, eggshells as well. Make sure there's eggshells in there. And I also added some um, earthworm compost and um, uh, very well composted mushroom compost. Your Epsom salts are quite uh, important for your tomato plants for the magnesium and the eggshells are extremely important for your tomatoes and this actually goes under your peppers too so tomatoes and peppers are treated the same. So yes and then our um, broccoli which I actually did the other day the broccoli actually is very similar to the corn mix so you're going to use chicken manure instead of cow manure if you have access to it if you don't just cow manure or any kind of manure is fine. Um, the, the broccoli family really does like a lot of nitrogen. It's a green leafy um, plant, so you want the nitrogen in there. And like, not overkill. Anything overkill with nitrogen is just gonna die. The um, cabbage, for cabbage, you do want to add a little bit of limestone in there, especially if you have club root, or if you're not sure about your garden, if, if it's if you're a new garden. Um, and you're not sure what's been in there before, it's a good idea to put a little bit of limestone in your mix for the club root and other types of diseases. The other thing that people have been asking me about are cutworms. <laughs> the lovely cutworms. As soon as you put your beautiful little plants in there, uh, like I put my, my broccoli and all that in there the other day, and a cutworm chewed off one of my Brussels sprouts. Um, cutworms, they kind of come with the territory. We actually put a bug zapper light up every night, so it turns on every night, um, and that zaps the moth. If you can get the moths before they lay their eggs, that's uh, your best bet. Um, if you're still showing signs, showing, if you are still showing signs of cutworms, let's see if I can get that out straight. Um, you can take also eggshells and put them around the plant along with a very hot powder, hot pepper powder. 
So I have some ground up cayenne pepper from last year, jalapeno pepper from last year. Uh, and you can put that in with the eggshells and the cutworms do not like the hot pepper and they, they have a lot of difficulty crawling over the, the eggshells. So you can put that, but uh, if you do have cutworms, your best bet is get yourself a bug zapper and get rid of those moths before they get too many eggs in there. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and um, we're gonna start planting. And as we're planting, I'll take some footage of all that. See you in a bit. Well, I guess in the video world, it's now. <laughs> yeah, hey. Okay. I'll edit some of that out. Okay, so when we are transplanting, we are actually in a perfect day. It's like only like 12 degrees out, so it's not too hot. Um, plants do not like to be transplanted when it's like 20 degrees out as much as it's nice for us it is not nice for the plants and it's supposed to be rainy for the next few days which is great for the transplants and we're past the freezing so far so first thing you do this is for the gourds gourds love 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 nitrogen so this is going to be quite disgusting to some of you you'll probably never want to do this. We're going to do it anyway. I'll show you what to do. First, you dig a big, giant hole. Way bigger than the plant itself. Because this plant here, if you would believe it, this red October, will grow all the way into that grass there. You want to there. All the way probably like 30 feet back there and just go over the fence and around the fence like this this thing will take up this whole fence will end up this is 12 12 plants i think eight plants um the whole fence will end up gourds from these few little guys all right so once i got a big giant hole that's way too big for the plant then i'm going to take this is going to surprise probably even a lot of the gardeners out there raw chicken manure raw chicken manure and put a fair amount straw and everything right down at the bottom yummy 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 i'm videotaping this okay this is absolutely delicious please wash your hands before you eat throw a little bit of dirt on there then you're going to take that gourd bump up this is the one that's also high nitrogen. It's got uh, your eggshells in there for calcium, peat moss, regular soil. <coughs> of course, my lovely bone meal and blood meal. And you're gonna put more than a handful underneath this. You're gonna put like a significant amount. These guys are hungry, hungry, hungry creatures. Um, and once all their vines grow out, which go 30, 40, 50 feet sometimes, their fruit also take a massive amount. And when Harry gets back here, I want to do this as a vlog, but you can actually put a stethoscope on the fruit itself, on the on the, um, the squash, and you can hear the water circulating in it. It is the coolest thing ever. Okay, a little bit of dirt. So I got all my good stuff in there, so as the plant grows and it's going to hit those lovely spots. Here's the other thing that lots of people don't do, especially with your gourds, because you want to try to keep the water and the nutrients in there. You put some kind of rim around there to keep the water and to keep the nutrients in there. I'm gonna put even more. After I put a layer of soil, I set some more stuff in there. Like I said, hungry, hungry plants. Then I'm gonna very carefully tip this guy over. Gourds also hate being transplanted. So I don't rake the roots on these guys. They don't like it. They'll be doing more damage than good. Make sure all your roots are not visible. So make sure all your roots are hidden. They start drying out, your plant dries out, it will die before it takes off. Might live, but it'll do much better if you don't do that. Cover all the roots. Here we go. And you will want to put um, a good gallon of water on this almost every day. They'll survive if you don't, but your fruit won't get, your big gourds won't get really big. You put a gallon of fruit, uh, fruit, put a gallon of water on there every day, and uh, you'll be surprised with how massive your plants grow. It's recording now. <laughs> All right, so okay. I'm going in. Is into, it running? Is it going? It is going. Okay. Yeah. Can you see my face? No. Then tilt it up just a little bit. 
you see me now? Now we can see you. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be putting a tomato transplant in. We've already got some in now, and we're going to get this one in just to show you the process. So I always bury my tomato plants up the stem. I've talked about this during the, the bumping up because it's going to make the stem a lot beefier and uh, more roots and you get a better fruit. So I want to hold approximately 18 inches deep for that size of tomato. And this mix I've already talked about with you guys started this vlog. Pop it in. For tomatoes and peppers, if you happen to have tomato tone, you take a handful of that in there, pop it in, throw some dirt in there, mix it in, another little layer of dirt, just to protect the roots as they're, because when they're first transplanted, the plants are a bit traumatized. So you don't want them hitting that pot soil right away. You want to give them a week or two of growing then when they hit that, they're ready to take off. So it's not as hard on their little tiny systems. So, very carefully take these beauties out. I like to rake the uh, roots just a little bit. Put it in. Um, you can remove these branches here at the bottom. Don't have to, but it does uh, make it a, a cleaner transplant, and you're not going to get tomatoes off of anything that you're buried anyway. So. There, those out. Put your soil back in. Give it a good pat. Leave a well around it so that it can uh, collect water when it rains or when you're first raining, uh, especially at the start. At the end of the year, it's not such a big, a, such a big deal. Take your tomato cage. This is the tricky part. Oh, sorry about that. You got damaged. Yes, I talked to my plants. I wonder if there's a bigger one. You're a big, you're a big tomato plant. This is the trickiest part, as we all know. You don't want to hurt your plants. And the other thing you can do if you don't have um, a bunch of tomato cages, oh, sorry about that. If you don't have tomato cages, you can just use large sticks and fasten them to the sticks, which I do a lot of too. Like I said before, the corn mix has a little bit more nitrogen in it because we are trying to get a nice strong stock to get a good, um, good corn. So I take just a handful of the bump up mix, make sure the hole is nice and deep, just a thin layer of dirt over top, put your corn in, leave a well, done. Repeat 150 times. Okay, so all the transplants are in. The garden is planted.